Good evening, everybody. It is much later than what I normally make these videos, but such is the day. Uh, just really that how that's how the day is going. My name is Daniel Young. I'm the owner and founder of Adapted Perspective and the Adapted Perspective social media platforms. And I'm back with another strategy session on the market at large and how we can use closed end funds to improve our investing. Uh, this is an unedited video, so who knows what you'll hear in the background as I film these in my house, and hopefully not much because my family's asleep, and hopefully the cat is asleep, but we'll see. Uh, I am not a financial advisor. I am a financial strategist, and I don't speak like the herd. I walk in limited company, and sometimes I walk alone. So what changed overall from last week? I finally decided what funds to pick. Um, yeah, I was conflicted, stricken almost, at the end of the video last week, unsure of what I would pick because I knew we were going to invest. I just didn't have a clear mind where we were going to invest. But um, I, got a, I got one of those odd, just timely emails, like kind of seeming like an unplanned email um, and read an article by Michael Foster of the Contrarian Outlook. And he offered some really great advice. And he said, if you're worried about stocks going through another sharp pullback, that's a reasonable concern that may linger until later this year when we get more clarity and not just more predictions on where America's economy is going. And that was me because ETW remains on the hit list. It's just, and I'll say this again in a little bit, I'm just hesitant to invest in outright stocks, knowing so many different people are predicting a, re a recession. So what then? Well, instead of stocks, focus on bonds. Foster continues with the media and Wall Street are finally catching on with Bloomberg acknowledging in a recent article that it's a good idea to buy more bonds to hedge against the stock market crash. And he's glad, his words, he's glad, I'm glad the pros are finally coming around to that view. So I don't know if the market will crash, but I do know if we hit a recession, the market's going to go down. When I, when I hear the words crash, I, I think of the dot-com crash, I think of Really, like the initial crash, we're all we're also fearful of. But I, I know these newbie rookie investors, which I was a rookie investor. Uh, I, the newbie investors are really timid. Like they put a little money in the market, and as soon as the market goes down, they freak. So could it crash like a COVID crash? I don't know. I hope not. But I, I say I don't know. I. I don't think it would, but I, I don't know. It's been crazy the last couple of years. So Foster's glad that Bloom that Bloomberg and others are finally coming around to bonds. But why would we want more people in the bond market driving up the cost of bonds? That's an easy answer because our share values go up. When more people pile into the market and take more shares out of the market, out of the market, it's that supply and demand. Your increase, you, the closed-end fund market doesn't change. The supply never changes. So when the demand goes up and your uh, your supply goes down, then cost goes up. Uh, so in the bond market, what bonds would we look at? He also says this. He says corporate bonds, and I would add high fixed income bonds, but he says corporate bonds yield a lot. And default rates are sticking around 1% overall. That's not, God, that's low, right? So that's very low. And a diversified bond fund would keep paying out interest, which is high since the Fed raised rates. On that, the central bank is now planning to cut rates. They've hinted at that. They've pretty much laid the cards out there. So that raises the value of the already issued corporate bonds and in, on our end, including those that we've already invested in, like BRW, CIF, F, uh, FSCO, and HGLB. And I'll throw in OXLC with their, they really do have a slew of collateralized loan obligations. So 
I'll admit, this is me, I'll admit that ETW is tempting. It's still tempting. But with predictions of a soft landing or recession and the implication that stocks during that cycle, I just, God, recession in stocks, like you think recession in the market goes down. I'm just not down to buy something that's predicted to go down. Like I don't want to buy it. Like we had that Japan dip for whatever reason. Um, and with a recession and the, with multiple outlets predicting, predicting a recession next year, if things stay the same way, knowing that I'm going to buy it now at pr pretty market to what it was before that weird uh, Japan dip, um, it's hard to buy something knowing that it's going to go down, right? But I get it. The market is all one big giant prediction, right? It comes, it really comes down to trends and using those trends in our strategies. It's not just buying discounts. It's buying discounts, but it's using the, dis the discounts to best, I'll say this, it's, it's best utilizing those discounts towards the current trend as well as the future trends, right? The market moves in cycles or waves. Buy low, sell high. Some people do that. Some people buy low and hold. Some people hope they're buying low and they hold it, right? It's really kind of up to you. But it it's buy the discount, knowing the current market and looking towards the coming market. And then trying to figure out how you're going to eat, eat, whether you hold the fund or you sell the fund. Now, the Fed more than hinted they're going to lift pressure on the rate market. And they're going to go back to obvious quantitative easing, which means everything should uptick besides the consumer market, which would downshift in a recession. So to dodge the slump, the best advice all around is bonds, corporate bonds and high fixed income bonds. So the, the energy and utility boats have left, right? Those have set sail. And eventually they'll cycle back. Tech dropped a little bit and then picked up steam again. And unless it dips, that's just, that's a hold for us. We're not looking at that. Real estate, like we have bonds at the top. Real estate sits under bonds. Um, I, I thought about buying HFRO last week. I just, as much as I like the fund, the investing market at large seems to be still unsure of the fund. Um, and that made me honestly a little doubtful. I wanted more overall confidence in the brand, I guess you could say, before we bought more of it, because I could buy more of it. And then that overall um, lack of confidence would just send the shares further south. And I uh, yes, in the grand scheme of things, everything is cyclical, up and down. I get it. And with a coming rate cut, yes, it should go up. I get it. But I wanted more general confidence before the rate cut, before we added more money into the fund. So maybe the slight pick-me-up from the past week will hold. Man, it should hold if the Fed cuts rates. And the Fed seems like they're going to cut rates. Which is still weird to be honest, because inflation went up. It's really hard to believe the Fed would cut rates knowing that inflation went up, which is still more proof to me that they're manipulating the market in general. So I don't know. HFRO is kind of, it, it's on our list as well. It, it sits well above ETW just because of, uh, of the different uh, portfolio. But I don't know. We'll see how it shakes out. So Instead of going through my normal spiel of things, I'm skipping all of that to get straight into the closed end fund master and the best bargains for the week. Uh, I didn't really pre-screen like normal, so I think I know what's going to end up at the top. I think I know the final list, but I really don't know. Uh, I have our targets and our strategy, so we'll see how the list ends up. So let me first share my screen and this is what we ended up doing last week we 
picked up and focused on high fixed income corporate bonds on either end of that pendulum swing. So in the, um, I guess you could say the uber wealthy asset margin, but also the not so uber wealthy asset margin uh, with the long-term plan to really just keep, keep this one long-term and keep this one until it cycles back up near three to sell it and then invest those proceeds forward. Um, all right, so here we go. We rank by discount, we filter by target or sort by target. We come up with a shrinking list of targets. Like if we end up with nothing that fits the metric, that'll be a weird day. We have to rethink the metric. Dividend policy, prices share means something we already own. Like we're trying to figure out what to buy. Current would mean current shares owned. Not paste. So we own everything in blue. Everything green is we track for any number of reasons. And in purple is recommended by somebody I trust. So first things first, we sort by category. We want monthly payers. Although people really love the Cabelli Fund. Uh, but it's a quarterly pair. So the focus is monthly. So now we sort by yield. I always like reverse. This one's going to stay on the list because it is still just the cheapest at, in returns to discount. It's, it's come down a little bit. It was creeping on 55% off. Um, it's come down a little bit in the last week. Gained seven cents a share. We'll see if that holds. Um, but at 54% off, I mean, you're paying uh, like 40, 46 cents a dollar at, for every share you buy. That's just obscene. So HFRO will stay. Otherwise, we want 9% or above. And now it just comes down to strategy on what we're targeting. So if we're looking for high fixed income, like um, of the categories of bonds and corporate government, everything in between, uh, and just high fixed income, and then we're looking at general bonds, loans, and real estate, BRW is bonds and a lot of other stuff now. Um, bonds, crypto, closed-end funds, um, Precious metals, uh, gold in general. It, it it is a hodgepodge of things right now. Um, let's see. These are all consumer based. I like the buy right idea, but heavy on um, just general stock. Heavy S and P investment. Heavy uh, consumer investment. Heavy not bond investment. No. Same thing for this one. This is utilities, but same idea. Come on. And then fixed income, yes, but we're, we're already invested into fixed income with everything say so we'll get to. It's not like Diversification for diversification. We're already, like, I, I didn't buy stuff to diversify. I bought stuff based on how the portfolio was, but really I, I bought it based on discount and their dividend policy and their yield and how the portfolio was structured. So diversifying just for the sake of buying a different bond company is not helpful. It's, that's spreading your money over too many too many different funds. So we have bonds, but not high, not does not have a high quantity of fixed income. They do have a lot of corporate bonds, but they're also invested in a lot of other places. This is a hodgepodge. It's that their bond portfolio percentage is not high, uh, but it, it's a backdoor play into energy and utilities. But 
it's, it's kind of the same thing. Like the energy and utility market is is off to the races and higher value than, than it used to be. Uh, we're still, we want to focus on bond, like heavy bond and high fixed income. So it's not going to be that. This is high fixed income corporate bonds. Same thing. This is all tech stocks. Doesn't fit the mold. And this is real estate. And it's going to stay on the list because it's real estate. So we're left with these three. Now, as you'll note, I mean, I like picking up, up shares in sets of 50 and sets of 100. There's really only one thing we could buy if we bought tomorrow. But this is our portfolio. It's not the account numbers, but it is everything in the, the portfolio. If you note here, we bought the same fund twice in the last month um, by, by design. Like, that's not a mistake. But we're not going to buy it right now. Uh, my goal is to collect the end of August dividends, uh, which would put us somewhere around 240. Um, we go back. Would still not count for these other funds, but if it's the if game of the market, if it stays about the same price over the next three weeks, which has been about the same price the last two weeks. But it stays about the same price. Maybe we will pick up another 100 set at the beginning of September, maybe. Um, that's really like we don't have the money for it now. We would have the money after we got paid dividends. Um, but right now, we're not buying tomorrow. Now, that being said, those are the best three um, picks just based on strategy. Super high fit. Go to Morningstar and type in FSCO and then CIF portfolio and look at the general breakdown of their funds. Then find their individual websites where you can dig into the portfolios and they are just laden with high fixed income, but just corporate bonds and it's different ends of the asset pendulum. Like you've got crazy high, like 2.3 billion in assets. And then on the other end of the swing, you've got 33, 35 million. It's not a ton. It's a, you know, it's a difference in price. It's a difference in dividend, uh, difference in total yield, but not so much in the actual yield percentage. But the goal's different. Like our goal with FSCO is to hold it long-term. Lifetime, I don't know. I mean, if rate... If rates, so when rates go down, bond prices go up. When rates go up, bond prices go down. So if we hit another scenario in that, in, uh, in that, I guess it's two scenarios. If we hit another t a point in history where that scenario plays out, that would probably be a good, good time to sell our bonds as <laughs> that event unfolds. Just so we're not, I mean, the, the goal is, yes, that we sell high, but the goal is also to just reap the dividend as that happens. But if all of a sudden the market dumps, then we can sell high, honestly. We can sell high and then reinvest it into the same thing when the market bottoms out. We can buy the same funds for cheap and do the same thing. So we'll play it by ear on fsco the goal with cif is when the market come when the market responds to the rate cuts when we ride the next hump of that roller coaster swing so when rates go down and bond prices go up our goal is to sell it high right and then reinvest the money forward and then if it dips again then we'll buy it again uh hfro is in the same scenario it's just it's real estate and it's that that outlier factor, crazy discount. Their portfolio is not fully online. The dividend should rise, especially in a lower rate market, and as their their assets come online. Uh, but the best choices for the week remain high fixed income and bonds, unless you need a real estate pick 
and then that becomes HFRO because it is the best real estate on discount. So that's honestly all I've got for the week is those three. And for us, if it's us, if it's us, yeah, if it's us, honestly, it's easy. I mean, I love HFRO. I would love to pick up another 50 spot or another 100 spot at some point. But of what we have the money for, it's this. We, If we had to invest tomorrow, we would, we would pick up 50 of CIF. But in the meantime, we don't have to invest. We'll wait till after our dividends and then go from there. But really, uh, of the funds there, right, of the funds on screen, but also of the funds coming in, that's still going to be the only place we can invest unless we add more to the account and juice the account. So that's all I got for the week. Yeah, if it's us, we're buying the top two if we had the money. Um, we're, we're buying the top two and then preparing for, or hoping, I guess you could say, the hopium of the market and the Fed. Uh, if we had that much money, we would pick up all three. But of what we have, we would buy CIS. So that's all I got. Otherwise, I'm just going to keep talking in circles. So wherever you are for the week, if you have... Well, first and foremost, wherever you are for the week, I hope your week goes well. Um, it, I think all of us would love a better rate market. And I don't know if it would fix inflation, but it would maybe hopefully make everybody feel better about inflation. And then at least, I mean, we think of all the other charges that go with inflation, like the other fees uh, that everybody just sandbags us on. Maybe those would ease up, maybe. But a rate cut, a rate cut, <coughs> rate cut is great in the sense, in the sense of maybe the market is recovering, but it's also kind of like, uh, it it really it makes me hesitant because inflation's going up. One group's already been caught falsifying data. Uh, we already know the Fed manipulates everything. So it, I, I still don't know the long-term effects of everything. Um, but I hope your week goes well. I really do. And strategy-wise, if you don't know your strategy, you can't talk strategy with somebody else, then you need to relook at your strategy and then see how you can improve it for you. Um, I, I would encourage you to use the current market with the future market in mind. And the best place I found to invest really is with closed end funds because you get them at discount uh, and you get a ton of access. I mean, you get discounts and dividends, you get upside as the discount window closes, uh, but you really do get a lot of access between funds. And instead of buying single shares of Berkshire and Microsoft and this, that, and the other and bonds, you can find a fund that does all of that for you uh, and just buy the one fund and then get tons of access through the one fund. And right now, the best thing is bonds. Um, but at the same time, your portfolio is your portfolio. So make, make the best choice for you. For us, it's bonds. So if you, no, I'm not gonna get into the normal spiel. If you want advice on finances, come find me on Facebook. Uh, and I talk about everything from full-time job all the way to getting out of the full-time job and into whatever that next step is for you. And if you want to talk about closed-end funds, you can find me on Facebook and do that too. You can also just comment on, on this video. Uh, whatever you're seeking, whatever it is, it's not going to happen on, on its own. You're going to have to do some work. you got to do some research, put in some work, put in some time. And then see how it goes. But at the end of all, right, in in that process of things is you making that happen. Whatever your goals and strategies and dreams and all of that stuff is, you have to make that happen because it will not happen on its own. So if you're hesitant about investing, do some research. If you have no idea what I'm talking about with closed and funds, do some research. Come find me on Facebook. I've got a giant list of stock market terms that gets into single funds, closed-end funds, and everything else. 
<laughs> but whatever it is you're seeking, make it happen. Put in the put in the work. It's worth it. So see y'all on another video. That's all I got. I'm tired and I'm kind of talking off my normal script, but the the stuff that the stuff that matters. If it matters to you, work on it. Which sounds obvious, but if it matters to you, work on it and then figure out a way to track it. As like some friends of mine say, it, if you can track it and measure it, then it becomes more of a thing and you want it to succeed, which is why I track all this stuff. So get out there and make your dreams happen. And I will see you all on another video. Bye-bye.